Good morning. Is the microphone working? Good, I can hear that. All right. I'd call the Senate Reapportionment Redistricting Committee meeting to order, which should be our last meeting uh, as a committee. And um, I'd ask Secretary Bethel to please call the roll. While he's getting ready. Um, I would like to at least take a real quick moment to say thank you to all of those that have been a part of working uh, on behalf of the citizens of Georgia on this, co in, in, on this committee. Um, in my office, we've had uh, Judy LeClaire and we've had Matt Brass on loan from the Pro Tem's office has been Gerald, I still haven't pronounced, figured out how to pronounce the last name, but he's Gerald, that's good enough. And um, and Nathan Humphrey from the Majority Leader's Office, and Pipkin has been very helpful. But a special thanks I would like to give to the those who've worked in the reapportionment office, and especially to Gina Wright for putting up with me, and the members give the people of Georgia good representation. Is the Secretary ready? Secretary yes. Bethel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll mark the Chairman present. Uh, Senator Kowser. Present. I'll mark myself present. Senator Balfour. Present. Senator Chance. Senator Fort, Senator Harbison, Senator Henson, yeah. Senator Judson Hill, Senator Jackson, yeah. Senator Rogers, Senator Schaefer, Senator Staten, Here. Senator Tate, yeah. Senator Tolleson, yeah. Mr. President Pro Tem. Yeah. I have 10 members present, Mr. Chairman. Having a quorum. First order of business, um, I'd like to call, we have uh, two um, pieces of legislation on what I call HB 44EX, which is the um, plan for Henry County Board of Commissioners. Uh, we'll tell the committee members that uh, um, this was, uh, came, has come over from the House. Um, this is a plan that was drafted by the commission uh, in working with their consultant and some of y'all will remember the name Linda Meggers. And, um, and uh, so they work with Linda Meggers in drafting this. Uh, I have in hand a resolution by the Board of Commissioners who voted four to one on behalf of um, um, supporting that, that piece of legislation. Uh, and I would entertain a motion with regard to House Bill 44 EX. I have a motion due pass. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Discussion. Senator Hanson. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I hope that during the process, usually before a motion, you would allow public comment. And I believe we have some people signed up to speak to that. So if you want to delay my concerns until you hear from the public, including Senator from the 10th District, I believe, here to testify. Uh, second of all, Mr. Chairman, as you know, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, we tried to respect the local delegation. Uh, and how the de local delegations felt about these matters. It is obvious that this bill was not supported by a majority of the local delegation. Uh, this is un real unprecedented to come out and try to totally disregard the will of the majority of the senators. It's an affront to your colleagues. It's something that I don't think anybody in this room really should accept. Second of all, the special call was clear and under courtesy, we have tried to make sure that every member of the Senate could be effective and do what they need to do. But the special call said that this special session was for enacting and revising and repealing or amending local laws which the General Assembly deems necessary to avoid unreasonable hardship or to avoid undue impairment of public functions. It is very obvious that many of our local jurisdictions have not done reapportionment at this time. DeKalb County did not, in part because we were told and discouraged from doing so uh, because the call was so uh, direct and that it had to be something that caused impairment and was very necessary. To do the Henry County delegation, do, do, Henry County reapportionment this time, when there's objections from the majority of the senators and the delegation, and to do so when it's obviously not going to cause undue public uh, problems 
or cause impairment of public function is, I think, the height of partisan politics, the height of dismantling the type of uh, relationship that members have had in this chamber and tried to maintain for a number of years. And, Mr. Chairman, I would hope that this body would table this effort, first hear all those in the public, including the senator from the 10th, who uh, is not on this committee that made sure he made the uh, effort to be here, and not only to be here for our sake or his constituents' sake, but to be here for our sake because the plan that they have drawn was done for political purposes, which we all understand, but it was not done in the best interest of protecting the state from lawsuits concerning the Voting Rights Act. We have both House, Senate, and Congressional maps for the Justice Department. If you start sending up maps that obviously aren't fair under the Voting Rights Act in individual counties, bypassing local processes for fair hearings, uh, I don't think it helps our position at all. So I, I hope that ultimately, after you hear from the other people, Mr. Chairman, that we will uh, postpone this matter until January. And then if you decide to disregard the uh, will of the members of this body and their local delegations, then certainly there is a possibility you can do that. I will also contend that although legal counsel feels that uh, you know, the local bill is a local bill, whether it's run general or not, I will also mention that this pressure there in trying to go through justice approval than, than this, there's no undue stress and impairment of public function. So I, Mr. Chairman, I hope you hear from the people. I hope we'll put this matter off until January. Thank you, Senator. I will say this, that in response to your comments, I am going to allow the public comment. I had no intention of not doing that. But I would like to refer the Senator to Senate Rule 3-2.1C. It says a local bill may be assigned to the Committee on State and Local Government Operations or any other committee as local legislation or general legislation. This is not unprecedented. Your comments are absolutely incorrect. I have here a list of all bills that have been local bills that have been considered over the, over the past few years as general bills. And as a matter of fact, I would like to also point out that Henry County Board of Education districts uh, were considered as a general bill back in 2001. So, Senator, it is not unprecedented. Um, the fact that the delegation may not approve, I have long said in this process that delegations are advisory in nature. There are two paths by which to pass local legislation, two paths that are legal that can be, that can be taken, either the route of a general bill or through the process of a local bill if you can get the delegation to agree. We have a situation where the delegation cannot agree. Uh, one senator in representing his county has asked for this bill to be considered as a general bill. It was signed this committee as a general bill and it will be considered by this committee as a general bill. It is not unprecedented. It is not in any way circumventing anything. The, the, no, senator, the, the uh, delegations, as we said, are advisory in their nature. And so that's what we've taken up and that we have before us. I have, the, I have the, the list here of those who have signed up, and I don't know if you're here to speak on the congressional maps or on these, uh, on uh, either House Bill 44EX or 45EX. The primary purpose that we've got here is um, on the, the congressional map to take in consideration. I will say that, um, again, this is a local matter that we have to pass the General Assembly. We had a senator that's asked for it to be considered this way. Um, both, well, we'll talk about the county commission. The commission has, their, they have their advisor, their consultant, that they drew these maps. They also consulted with their attorney, and with their consultant, with their attorney, they have pa passed these maps that, that conform, that are legal maps. And so that's the determination that they have. And uh, I will say that from the commission standpoint, um, I spoke, as I, said, as I said, with the attorney yesterday, they repeatedly have tried to engage the senator from the 10th. And he has not returned phone calls to them, did not attend public hearings, um, and the commission voted four to one. And they're the ones that are closest to the people, so I believe that they're the ones that have represented their interest and they've asked for us to take this under consideration. All right, I have... Okay, hang on, let me just, uh, Marilyn Flynn for Henry County, George McClellan 
from Gilmer on the congressional or the Henry County? Okay, on the congressional. Uh, Janet Turner for Henry County. Bill Craig for the congressional. Senator Steve Gooch for the congressional. Senator Emanuel Jones for Henry County. Um, Bruce Holmes. Woo, I got that. Where's Bruce? You here for Henry County? All right. Um, Reverend E. Weiler. E. W. Lee. He stepped out. He's here for Henry County. And William Perry for the Congressional. Um, before, I, before I go any farther, please um, ask the members committee, and I didn't start at the very beginning, that when um, you make comments or um, or um, ask questions, would you please identify yourself uh, for the court reporter? I was remiss in saying that before, and that she probably would appreciate that. Um, okay, we've got we have limited time that we uh, have to do this. Um, I uh, will allow those that are here to speak on the Henry County Manor on uh, HB 44 EX. And I would ask, I, as I understand it, the county commission adopted the, these districts and the school board has decided to have the same districts as the county commission. So while we have to have two different votes, I would appreciate if you, your comments could address both of those at once so we could be um, if, efficient with that. Is everybody okay with that? All right. Um, and since we've got, uh, we have a, the congressional, we have an amendment that has been given to me. I don't know if it's going to be offered or not on the congressional. So we do have a, a considerable amount of discussion that will happen on that. So I would ask that uh, on the Henry County matter, if all, if all uh, those are going to speak, please keep your comments to three minutes. And if somebody is already addressed in the issue, um, please let's don't have just repeatedly saying the same thing over and over. So somebody's already said your point. You could help us out. I would greatly appreciate it. Eric Charles, if you identify yourself and where you're from, for the record. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Eric Charles. I represent the Henry County. Well, at correction, I represent the fourth district of Henry County School Board. I've been elected official for the past ten and a half years in Henry County on the school board. Uh, I would like to first start off by thank you this committee to allow me the opportunity to sit here before you and, and uh, share my concerns. Um, I like to think of this as a, a, a renewing of the minds. I, this, this meeting reminds me of why I wake up every day and I'm, I'm active and advocate for my community and my, uh, and the, my constituents in my community. Um, this uh, bill, I oppose the bill uh, with the school board, I, I voted against it, and I uh, also shared my concern with the county commissioners. Uh, this this uh, proposed bill, it what it does is it takes me out of, I, I represent the 4th district, again, I say for the past 10 and a half years. It takes me out of the 4th district and places me in another district. What happens in doing that, I've had six precincts in my, in, in my voting district, and Moving me to the fifth district will only allow me to have one precinct out of the six precincts that I've been accustomed to running in. Uh, I think that's a. Uh, I was just in election this past November. The my my uh, the voters went to the polls and voted me in the district. Now you move me out of the district. I think that's unfair to the voters. It's unfair to me. The people that I formed relationships with over the years, just like all of us here, we all elected. And if someone was to take you from out of your house and place you in your cousin's house, you know, you like your own bed. I like my bed, so to say. So I, I oppose this map, uh, proposed map that, that they have elected. I think it's a disservice not only to me, but the voters in the district in which I represent. And that's what I have to say. And I thank you again for the opportunity. Again. We have limited time, so members of the committee, you'll have, you're going to have to make a choice of where you're going. Senator, 
I'd appreciate not being interrupted. Have I not ever not recognized you, Senator? I believe that's not correct. Um, I'm just saying to the members of this committee that we have limited time that we have that we'll be, a, be able to have this, so you have to make your decision on which subject matter you want to spend the most time on. Senator Henson. I will mention, Senator, I had my hand up earlier during your previous discussion, was not, did not interrupt you, did not speak out, and then was no later not recognized. So you know, that is why I made a friendly little comment so you would know I was here not to try to impede your proceedings. Uh, may I ask a couple questions? The district you've been moved to, uh, the 5th District, is it another incumbent in that district or is that an open district? That is correct. There is an incumbent in that district uh, and I'm taken out of the 4th being placed in another uh, sitting uh, school board member's district and he's being placed in my district. And, and, and it makes, you know, he wasn't elected by the people in the 4th District, nor were I other uh, people in the 5th District. And, and are both those minority districts? Uh, both of the districts, they're, they're not heavily minority, no, 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 they're not heavily minority districts, no. In fact, uh, District 4 is, uh, right now, it's uh, majority uh, Caucasian. Thank you. I appreciate you coming. I'll reserve and the senator from the 10th. I'll have some questions for him when he comes in. Any other questions? Senator Tate. I'm so glad you came in this morning. Can you give me some idea of the percentages of minorities that are presently in the 4th and um, in the 5th? And also along those lines, um, the majority minority part of the district. How long has have you been representing that? Was there a reason to grow the districts? Did they, they change in composition as far as the numbers in the district? Um, you know, what was the genesis that you were aware of of changing the lines the way they were changed? Right. Let me say this uh, again. I, I've been on the board for ten and a half years. When I first came on the board, it was only three percent minority in the fourth district. Now it has changed to about forty-one percent. Forty, forty-one, forty. It's it's up in in that na neighborhood right now. In the fifth district, it's about fifty-one percent. I'm told right now it's it's currently about fifty-one percent minority. Um, and over the years, over the ten years, that has you know grown to where it's at today. Did the numbers change? I mean, wh why are we, why are they changing the districts at this point? Did you have to grow people in the district, or the rationale that I'm told from 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 the county is that the the numbers we were we were underrepresented in the fourth district of minorities in the district, and they they needed to uh, level it off or, or 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 to add some, if you will, to add some to the district, which. Uh, I don't see it that way. I, I, I don't agree with that philosophy either. Thank you. Senator Fort. Uh, are, is your, uh, are your elections for a school board partisan or nonpartisan? It's nonpartisan. Nonpartisan, so it's a November election. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. 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 I was just trying to make it easier on you, but if that if this is easier, that's fine. Okay. going to slow me down. I may not be able to cover my statement in the three minutes, but I do have a copy that I would like to submit uh, All right. for the record. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm Dr. Marilyn Flynn, and I reside in Stockbridge, Georgia. Um, <clears throat> I'm hoping that the committee will not pass House Bill 44 today. I would prefer that they uh, follow the standard procedures and allow uh, 
the, the legislative, the, the local legislative delegation uh, to examine and debate uh, these issues. Um, with Mr. Charles's seat, if you look at the map and find out where his residence is, it's right on the boundary line. So the way I view it, and by the way, I have worked with Mr. Uh, Charles for the ten and a half years that he's been on the board because he's the only board member that uh, will champion the disadvantaged children in our schools. And that's what I attempt to do, is to advocate for that population in our schools. Uh, he's only the, the only black board member, but he's been elected in this predominantly white uh, district and has done an outstanding job. Um, I think that error could be corrected by just changing the line very slightly and he could remain in this district where he's established a good rapport with the citizens. Now, they have taken the residence that the uh, District 5 board member is in and have moved it into uh, District 4. That's the 21-year-old son of one of our state legislators, representatives, uh, who has been moved from the predominantly white area into District 4 out of District 5. Um, <clears throat> I live in the city of Stockbridge. It's the largest city in the county. Uh, it has, we're told it has a population of 32,000 and uh, in, in District 42, but 25,000 are in the city of Stockbridge, and the majority of them, 59%, are black. And with these new lines, they have drawn um, the lines separating the majority black area into District 5, uh, thus diluting the uh, chance of any Democrat getting elected in District 4. They were approaching uh, a population ratio that I think was close to being able to elect more African Americans in District 4. They elected a black commissioner in District 5. Um, now they have strengthened the majority in District 5 by moving more blacks out of the western section of District 4 and the northern section of District 2 into District 5. Ma'am, your, your time has expired. I, th I thank you very much for this. Senator I Ford. hope you will give consideration to these comments. Thank you. Yes, Ma'am, ma somebody has a question. I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Are you saying that you see this plan as an attempt to eliminate an African American from a position elected position. Absolutely. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much. And I'll make sure that you that uh, you get recognized when we take up the congressional. Ms. Turner? I, I am Janet Turner, and I'm from Stockbridge in Henry County. And I agree with everything that Eric Charles has said and, and um, Marilyn. I, w I want to also say that I talked with um, Commissioner Warren Holder, who voted against this map. And he said that to look at this map is very good. It's so good that he really thinks something's wrong with it. And I, I think that this is a personal, political, and racial mistake. I, um, I was shocked that Steve Davis would draw the lines and move his own residence and put his um, home into the District 4 and to move Eric Charles into District 5. I, um, I don't know, but I think that we have four cities in Henry County and we have five districts. 
And so we will have four cities in all the districts except for District 5. Uh, District 5 will not have a city and will probably be disadvantaged by that. And I, I do think that the, the blacks um, have been added to District 5 to make a majority district out of that. And I thank you very much for Thank you. Speak. Any questions? All right, thank you. Um, Senator Emanuel Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of this committee. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I might have a point of personal privilege. Uh, are you accepting any more? Uh, I had some other guests that come in that want to speak to this particular issue. Is it too late for them to sign up? Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman, and if we could circulate it, I have some guests in the back late arriving, and I believe Senator Davenport as well would like to speak to this issue. Um, I will be very brief in my comments, and I understand the time constraints here, but let me just kind of set the record straight uh, regarding how this process was handled. The Henry County Board of Commissioners never ever sent any kind of correspondence whatsoever, nor did they call me regarding coming or attending any meetings regarding the maps that were drawn. And if they have some correspondence, uh, but they sent and asked the delegation to get involved, I would certainly like to see it, because I never received it. Uh, this process, Henry County is one of the fastest and has been one of the fastest growing counties uh, in this state. The minority population has grown tremendously in this county, and particularly of in the fourth and the fifth district. And when you look at the way this process was handled, there's really one person, a representative in the house who drove uh, this process and putting together both these pieces of legislation. I may also add that uh, in looking at one of the pieces of legislation, there's only three signatures, and for it to come out of the House as a local act, I believe it requires four. Um, and uh, one of the signers of both legislations here today, and I certainly hope that Representative Howard Mosley will have an opportunity to speak as well. Uh, and I'm sure you're going to hear from one of the uh, county commissioners in Henry County. But this process from the very beginning was seriously, seriously flawed. Uh, we were told, and I was told personally by the governor's office, that no local bill would be taken up unless there was an emergency. And I asked the governor's office specifically because I had heard that Henry County was making an attempt to draw maps, and it was my understanding that we would not take this up, that we had more than enough time to engage this process as it was rolled into our next uh, cycle coming up in January. Um, I oppose both these pieces of legislation because they're serious, serious flaws. Um, I believe a legislator who has a pecuniary interest in any law that we pass should recuse himself. And that's something that I've asked repeatedly from the representative who is the sponsor of this legislation, considering the fact that his son serves on the Board of Education, that he has had undue influence in drawing these maps. Your time's up. Any questions? Senator Hanson. Uh, first of all, do you think that there is concern that this map fails to comply with the intent of the Voting Rights Act to make sure that minorities in this county are fairly heard and have a voice in government? Do you have any concerns further that, you know, District 5, for instance, is at 49.65 BAP, it's, they didn't even take it over the 50, so uh, kept it below that number intentionally? where they made two and four, one's 36 percent black, one's 40 percent black, to try to maybe not to spread out minority votes or any other concerns that there was, if not voting, in lieu of partisan or personal concerns, meaning somebody's son. I mean, just comment just briefly. Do you think this could be a voting rights problem? Senator, thank you for that question, and, and you're absolutely correct. I strongly believe that this 
uh, issue has serious, serious voting rights consequences and that it violates the maps that were drawn by the Board of Commissioners and, again, the Board of Ed is the same map, same district lines, uh, seriously violates uh, the Voting Rights Act. We have in District 5 a majority right, uh, black district and as a representative that was elected uh, who happens to be the son of a representative in the House, he was moved out of that district purely because he's white and he felt that he couldn't get reelected in a majority black district. We have a candidate, a black African, an African American candidate that served on the Board of Ed for over 10 years serving another district, District 4, who you heard from today was intentionally moved into that district. And now his district, uh, which has the city of Stockbridge, which has grown significantly in minority population, it's probably close to 50%, if not over, um, was gerrymandered such that the black VAP, the voting age population, was reduced significantly uh, so that that district would not be uh, over 50% as well. The way these maps are drawn, I have serious, serious concerns regarding the Voting Rights Act, the disenfranch disenfranchisement of African Americans. Let me just add, I live in the 5th District. I know this district well. And I lived in this district for the past uh, 20 years that I resided in Henry County. So I know it extremely well. And when you look at how, this, how both these maps were put together, they were driven by one person with one, per with one purpose, and that is to protect his son with total disregard to all of those African Americans that live, work, and play in both the 5th and the 4th districts in Henry County. And you further, sir, are the chair of the full, uh, Henry County delegation, that's correct? That is correct, and this matter never came before the delegation. And if this body decides today to postpone this action, table this measure, do you commit to this committee that you would engage with both the commission and other members to work on a map and try to come to some resolution in, by January when we come back in session? Absolutely, Senator. And it was my impression that we had time to do that after this resolution was passed by the Board of Commissioners. I had no idea um, that this matter would come up. Again, according to the governor's office, and I have a copy of an email that I sent to the governor's office and lieutenant governor's office inquiring about whether or not we would even take up any local maps and the response I received from the governor's office was no we would not do this executive session it was only limited to those things that was on the executive order and the only time that we would consider local matters would be in those extreme circumstances uh, on hardship as per his XO. And finally when you have some other people here that want to comment we definitely want to hear from of course the the senator and uh, and Representative Mosby might have more to say but uh, would you instruct the members of the community that if they simply oppose the plan to say that, and if they do have more at length to be you know, very concise in what they do because we do have a congressional map. But I appreciate you and members of this community coming and talk about something that will help this committee know that running this as a general bill is fine if we have time to study it, look at it, research it. But take 10 minutes, 15 minutes, uh, and even I'm sure the chairman uh, who worked and brought up issues like Section 2 concerning my district where, you know, you worry about whether one, a minority district could have been formed. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure that you haven't had time to look at all these districts as much as you would like. So hopefully, uh, you know, we'll take those things into consideration and postpone this. But thank you. And thank you, Senator, for that uh, question. And, um, Henry County is in excess of 30 miles from this capital. There are many that got up early today, that drove long hours to get here, enduring a lot of traffic uh, on our interstates. It would be my hope that they will be given their three minutes to speak such that this committee could hear from all of the citizens of Henry County that chose to be here today. Senator Henson, I will tell you, I have done my due diligence and I have been working on this matter. That's why it's before you today. Any other questions? Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of this committee. Uh, Bruce Holmes. <clears throat> How is everyone? Um, at the beginning of this meeting, um, I kind of want to set the record straight. Um, I heard that um, Linda Meggers was the one that developed this latest map, and um, that's pretty much totally untrue. Uh, Linda Evers did take part, or Meggers did take part in developing the first two maps that were presented to the commission. 
and um, we came to consensus on, on both maps. Um, the third map was developed by um, uh, Commissioner Reed Bowman as well as uh, Steve Davis. In the initial map that uh, Linda developed, um, the, the minority population in District 4 was somewhere around 47 uh, percent. A couple of weeks later, we had another commission meeting, and um, they showed a new map that took that, um, that uh, minority uh, percentage down to about 38 percent. Then it was changed to 41 percent. Uh, we then held a map, um, you know, a meeting with the school board. And uh, I'm sorry, I have an ear infection. Uh, we held a meeting with the school board, and uh, Commissioner Reed Bowman presented a map that took District 4 from 47 percent, basically from Linda's first map, down to 36 percent. I then started having uh, town hall meetings on um, the redistricting. Um, Steve Davis was um, part of pretty much all of those meetings. Uh, he did ask me uh, what what could he do to um, to um, get me to support um, the latest map. Um, in talking to the community, I told him 40 percent sound like a good number. Uh, he kept his word. He got the um, uh, minority population up to 40 percent. I then voted yes on the map. I also voted yes on the map because, um, uh, like the previous speaker stated, District 5 is the only commission district that is not a part of any of the municipalities in Henry County. I, uh, I, uh, I voted yes on the map because it was the, the only district that wasn't um, near I-75 and that could take place in uh, economic development. When I looked at the last map and how he got the map to, um, to 40 percent, there was obvious gerrymandering along flipping road. So uh, a few of the commissioners, although we voted on it, we never thought it would get past the Justice Department because it did look like there were certain neighborhoods that were selected um, in, the, um, in the third map. Um, I did have an opportunity to look at Emmanuel Jones's map, and um, based on um, the population um, and the diversity in the county, I do think that would be the better map to go to. Um, and I think that um, is pretty much uh, pretty much everything that I have to say regarding um, the redistricting in uh, Henry County. Thank you. Any questions, Senator Fort? Let me be clear. Are you supporting or not supporting the map that is before us today? I am. Um, I after re reviewing uh, Senator Jones's map, I think that would be the um, best map for um, the future of the county. Okay, so let me just be sure. You are not supporting the map that is before us today. Is that correct? No, I'm not. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Reverend E. W. Lee. I get it right this time. I'm sorry, I misinterpreted a period for an I there, and I, so I called you Reverend Wiley earlier, so I owe Wiley. you an apology. Way off, way off. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you say your name, where you're from, for the record? I appreciate it. Uh, Reverend Edward W. Lee, uh, McDonough, Georgia, Shiloh Baptist Church, Henry County. Uh, we're here today um, not supporting the map that's on the table, but, but supporting a map that uh, better represent the diversity of our of our county that is presented by Senator Jones. And uh, if I may just ask uh, for a moment that all of those persons who traveled all the way from Henry County this morning just to come and be with us to be a part of this session, could they just stand or raise their hand? Thank you very much. And basically, we're here just to support the, the map that uh, Senator Jones uh, has drawn. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? Senator Hanson. As these other maps were proposed, do you feel you were in the minority community in Henry County really got a lot of input and a lot of interaction on trying to de develop these maps as they were going on? No, uh, early on in discussion with uh, Commissioner Holmes, um, we, uh, we had a great deal of discussion. We had uh, uh, a town hall meeting after they had been drawn and, and uh, been placed, I guess, in, uh, in nomination from the county. 
but before that, we as a community had no input in, into those maps. So further, so it seems like the commission was saying they were lacking. Very much so, very much so. If given the time to January to work with Senator Jones and other people, that you would be more than happy to try to turn out uh, members in the community that you know to try to participate in those hearings and give their input? Very much so. We would, we would very much uh, uh, honor that opportunity to have that particular time to review everything and uh, hopefully come back in January with something that is more acceptable to all of us. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Um, Senator Gail Davenport. Good morning, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. And to the ladies and gentlemen of this committee, I'll be very brief, um, but thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, uh, I want to be brief so the others may speak. But I represent portions of Clayton County and portions of Henry County. And I've heard from a lot of constituents in that area uh, wanting to make sure that the school board lines and also the commission lines are drawn very fairly. I heard from the only school board, only African American school board member, uh, and when I heard from that member, and when I looked at the map, and the only uh, uh, he's been on that commission about 10 years, a, a decade, and that's the only person out of all those board members uh, that are affected and changed, uh, and uh, we don't think it's fair. Uh, I have assured the members, uh, the residents of Henry County, uh, that we will certainly do the right thing. Uh, I have assured them that, that no representative, uh, Democrat nor Republican, uh, can bully me or, or harass me into signing a map that is packing up in that area. And so I say to the citizens of Henry County today, uh, when they go back, they can assure the other, uh, Senate, the other citizens of that community that that is not the way we do business down under the Gold Dome. That is not the way the chairman or this committee uh, 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 do business. And we do not do business like that, and that's not how it works. And it was a fair, we try to make this a fair process and you can come and voice your opinions, and no representative uh, uh, can, 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 can hijack this, this process. And we are coming today to say to this community uh, uh, that we will certainly uh, 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 do the right thing as it comes to your community for the commission seat and for the Board of Education, and not allow any packing of African Americans in that district. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Any questions? Uh, so you oppose plan? I do oppose the plan. And to the, uh, I'm sorry. The author of the bill, do you know who was the primary author of this House legislation? Uh, Senator Steve Davis came to me uh, on the floor. Represent Is Representative he here right Steve now? Davis. Uh, I don't see him. Because I have some questions for him. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. Do you think he's not too proud of his work here today that he doesn't come to the meeting to present his bill? I'm not sure. Okay. Senator, I'd be careful with your comments. I mean, we do have a certain decorum with regard to members of the General Assembly. Yeah. Well, I have some questions for Mr. Chairman. I hope he'll uh, be available to answer. I hope the Chairman well, will make Senator, available Well, Senator, he, he designated me to be the representative for him in this, well, in this capacity. Any you. other questions? Um, <clears throat> Hearing none. Thank you, Senator. Okay. Uh, representative Howard Mosby. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, members of the committee. Um, out of abundance of caution, I guess I would ask for this committee to uh, postpone this particular um, vote on this legislation until next year, give us an opportunity to really vet through some of these issues. Heard a lot of testimony about uh, for and against, and uh, we haven't had an opportunity as a delegation to sit down to, to really vet this out. Uh, I would like to have that opportunity to do so. Uh, we know that this is a truncated time period here that we're dealing down here uh, during a special session. So uh, 
again, out of abundance of caution, I would ask the committee to actually postpone this particular piece, particular piece of legislation. Thank you. Any questions? Senator Hanson. Um, since the author is not here to ask this question, what can you see about this legislation that says that it is necessary to avoid unreasonable hardship or avoid undue impairment of public functions in Henry County? Uh, I'd like that testimony for the governor to take the governor. Can you tell me? I, I personally don't see any reason why we need to expedite this particular piece, particular piece of legislation. I do represent Henry County, and uh, I don't know of any reasons why we need to actually move on this right now. We can actually wait till January. We can have hearings over the fall to really vet this out. As you see, there's a number of people here who really want to have their voice heard. So, uh, and Ms. Representative, last you're chair of the DeKalb County delegation. Correct? I am chair of the DeKalb House delegation. And uh, you have both complex issues with the school board and the uh, county commission. Just that's the house delegation. That's right. <laughs> about that. Senator from Tenth is our Senate chair. Uh, you've got school board and commission districts, and have you brought a map this time? Or we we have not. We are going to wait till January to to draw maps in DeKalb County for uh, the school board and county commission for the same reason to actually let the community have more voice in the process. Thank you. Uh, Representative Mosby, I'm looking at the uh, demographics political demographics of the District 5 seat in Henry County. Do you know why the black voter age population was kept below 50%, as a matter of fact, 49.65? Do you know why that was done? I, I do not. And uh, again, as a, as a delegation, we haven't had an opportunity to really vet through uh, the particular map to talk about why uh, the particular districts were drawn the way they were drawn to to have that conversation that discussion Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you members of the committee. All right members uh, again just want to reiterate that there were public hearings held the county commission voted four to one for this map citizens have come and have spoken but as Opinion of the chair, their issue is with the county commission who basically looked at this, this plan and felt like this represented um, what the people wanted because they can hold the county commission absolutely accountable for this plan. I spoke with the county attorney who, and we talked about the legal components of this, and with regard to that, they have they worked with their consultant. They made that determination, and um, so I believe that that's their responsibility. I have a motion and I have a second on Alice House Bill 44 EX. Senator Henson. Uh, Senator, since the author is not here to uh, represent his work, I'd like you to answer the question why you feel this bill has to move at this time while it's necessary to avoid unreasonable hardship, to avoid undue impairment of public functions, and why it has to be done at this time. Senator, I would say that when it comes to what deems to be undue hardships we could have as many definitions as we got people in this room and that is a matter for each and every member uh, and delegation taking consideration and working with the governor's office so basically a non-responsive answer thank you uh, i would also like uh well, senator you're trying me the proper time if I'll we're going to have proper debate. decorum let's have proper decorum but you're trying to make in those little comments like that it was an accurate comment Mr. it was an accurate response both. Correct. That's proper time I move the table, Mr. Chairman. Did you say you're moving the previous question? No, no, I said I believe there's a question in case you did not. Okay. See Senator Ford. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, in the absence of the author of the bill, I have a question for you. What was the, can you tell us what the primary purpose was? for configuring District 5 in the way it was done. Can you tell us that? Senator, again, I'm, you know, this is a county. They hired their consultant. The county attorney worked with the Board of Commissions and the consultant. They came up with this plan, and they voted 4-1 to one after public hearings on this plan. So I was not a part of drawing this plan, and um, 
the county attorney in working with the consultant. Again, the consultant, as I said, was Linda Meggers, who used to work here at the Capitol. Um, we have, should very well know what needs to be considered in drawing the plan. In, in, in the absence of the author, uh, I think it would be prudent to table the bill, but even more so, it seems to me from the testimony that we've received that race could very well have been the primary reason the primary reason that that district was drawn that way. And if that's the case, that's problematic in terms of the Voting Rights Act. And, uh, you know, but I'm just concerned that we're here voting on something, not able to get the answers, the author's absent. Um, and it seems to me that race was the primary component in drawing that, that district. And make <laughs> I will have the room cleared. This is not a place for outbursts like that. So please, if you will, man to keep it a manner of decorum, I would really greatly appreciate it. Uh, Senator, you may continue. Uh, and, and that's all I have to say. I just want to put that on the record so we can, uh, at some future point, get back to that point. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any other questions or matters of discussion? Senator Tate. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I respectfully um, want to say that you are talking about decorum, and you're talking about the way that um, the citizens have come to voice their disapproval of a map. You've continued to state that Linda Meggers was the person that drew this map. It was stated on the record that this map was not her map. She is not here to discuss this map, and it is an affront to the people of Henry County that have come here asking that we hold off on, um, on voting on a map that has not allowed them to have public comment. And I want that on the record for everyone to understand that that is not the way that we have done business in the past under this gold dome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator, I will say that I spoke with the county attorney who relayed to me that they had a consultant. The consultant was Linda Meggers, of whom they consulted with in drawing this map. I don't think I said that Linda Meggers drew the map. She was a consultant that was used uh, in putting this together. So I can only relay what the county attorney has relayed to me. Maps, not the map that is before us this morning. Senator Henson. Move table, Mr. Chairman. Before I accept that motion, which I'm going to allow you to make the motion, are there any questions or other matters of discussion? Hearing none, Senator Henson, I'll recognize you. you have a motion. Ms. Nova, Ms. Chairman, I move to table um, Senate Bill 44. I have a motion to table House Bill 44EX. In the opinion of the chair, I'll allow the motion. I will say that uh, I believe the, the, um, the motion should not carry because we have other business to take care of, and the county commission voted 4 to 1. All those in favor of the motion, vote aye. Aye. Let the record note the chairman waited a long time for the, uh, the, the, the person that offered that. Uh, all those opposed say no. The motion does not carry. I have House Bill 44 EX before me, and I have a second. All those in fo favor of House Bill 44 EX will vote aye. Those will vote no. I'll ask the secretary to call the roll. Having a quorum and having a vote 8 to 3, House Bill 44X passes and now rests in the Rules Committee. Uh, members of the committee, I bring before you House Bill 45EX, which is the plan for the school board. In speaking with the, the attorney for the school board, um, the school board had uh, agreed to uh, adopt the same plan that the county commission did, and uh, so their plan is, uh, is identical to what the... the um, the county commission plan would be do I have a motion 
I have a motion to pass 45, House Bill 45 EX. Is there a second? Second. I have a second. Is there discussion? Senator Henson. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> was it the same author, the bill? I believe it is, yes. Uh, is there anybody with the school board here or representative that could answer a brief question or two about it? or? Senator, again, I, we had those who had signed up to speak, and I asked for those to come to speak to speak on both matters so that we could be efficient in our comments. Good. I didn't hear. I heard it from yeah. a commissioner and one school board member. I didn't know if there was anybody for the school board. So uh, I think we did hear your comments. If you have anything to add, he might allow you to. Again, my name is Eric Charles. I, uh, Just to, which, if you would please. No, the chair has not recognized you. I'm sorry, a member of the committee can't call somebody to come up here to speak. Um, the member has had his opportunity. Ball. I mean, that's that's fine with 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 me. We do have a congressional plan, and if that's, I mean. Well, I think I do think we need to ask a couple questions on the process, Mr. Chairman, that we didn't hear in the commission. We we heard Linda Meggers was hired. There was a couple generations, and and. I Are you intending to? Call everybody else back up to no, speak Mr. on the. I'm now referring my question to you, and if you can't answer it, hopefully you'll ask the audience if somebody can help you in the dialogue. I'm asking: Are you wanting to speak to one additional person about the school map, or are you wanting to speak to everybody that testified on this? Uh, Mr. Chairman, right now, what I would like is my answers, my, my questions answered. So, if you can answer them, uh, there may be no need for him to come forward. Uh, what I would like to know is whether or not there was a separate track of a school board plan being developed and you know at what time and why did the school board opt to I spoke with the county the attorney the county attorney said that they uh, had looked at, at some plans but when the county commission adopted their plan that they felt like they wanted to coincide with the county commission plans and that, that was the county attorney or the school board that was the school board attorney school board attorney and Ms. chairman did they previously work on any other maps that they had presented? The I wasn't there. I can't answer hearings? that question. Would there be? Would it be all right, Mr. Chairman, if there, you would see if the school board attorney could answer those questions? If I'm sure they're here, I would assume. I don't know that they're here. I can't ask for the school board attorney. Do you, they didn't they sign here? up to speak, Senator. Uh, well, usually when we have bills, you know, we we have. You know some questions, and we try to get some answers to those questions, Mr. Chairman. And usually, those that want to testify sign up. So, well, if they are the proponent of a bill that is both illegal and not properly vetted, I will, I will they may quickly not I will quickly correct you on that. You uh, being a non-attorney and not working in this area, I do not know that you could be the one that can actually call them an illegal map. So, well, that, so I'd be careful in offering legal advice. Not being an attorney, I can offer it. It's attorneys that have got to worry about it. <laughs> uh, the, uh, but again, Mr. Chairman, I mean, the point of this committee is to try to answer some of these questions on the process. And if the attorney for the school board isn't here, then I would just ask you to allow any elected officers of the school board to briefly come back to address a couple of these questions. And that will be the, uh, I would be happier. If I'll let you call one person to come to speak to that. Please. Please identify yourself again for the record. Again, my name is Eric Charles. I represent District 4 on the Henry County School Board. And, and my question really is, could you develop the process how the school board came to follow the congressional map, whether you had any public hearings as a school board uh, with the community to talk about school board districts? And then also, just because we don't know for sure, were they the same districts as the commissioners prior to this reapportionment effort today or was that were they overlaid on the commission districts and not previously done so so if you could just the process real fast well the process was there was no process what happened was uh, the school board came together with the county commissioners and and under I guess the advice of the the uh, the election, uh, the election committee from Henry County, the uh, the lady that does the election said to keep the print precincts the same without crossing and splitting precincts, it would be easier to just adopt the same type of map that the county commissioners do. But there was no no forms given by the school board 
uh, to hear public input on on uh, uh, doing the maps that were before you today. Thank you. And also, if I would add that there wasn't a, another elected official here was Bruce Holmes. He was part of the board of commissioners that said that Linda was not, a, she was a part of the first maps and not the map that's before you today. That was Commissioner Holmes that said that. That's on the BOC. Board of commissioners. All right. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. I have before us House Bill 45 EX school board plan for Henry County. I have a motion and I have a second, correct? Yes, Senator Henson. Good table, Mr. Chairman. I think this would be better addressed in January. Let, um, if I could ask you to hold off on that to make sure there's no other discussion. Any for further discussion on House Bill 45 EX? With that, Senator Henson, your motion. Move, move table, Mr. Chairman. There's a motion to table. All those in favor to table, vote aye. 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 All those opposed, vote no. The chair of the nose have it. You want to roll call vote on that? No, thank you. All right. I have before us House Bill 45 EX for final passes from the committee. Again, the uh, school board voted four to one to adopt this. All those in favor will, favor will vote yes. All those opposed will vote no. The secretary will call the roll for the purpose of taking the vote. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Calvin, yes. I want myself to be in front of you. Senator Balfour, yes. Senator Chance. Senator Ford? No. Senator Hopkins remains absent. Senator Henson? No. Mm -hmm. Senator Judson? Yes. Senator Jackson? Absent. Senator Rogers? Yes. Senator Schaefer? Absent. Senator Staten? Yes. Senator Tolleson? Yes. President Coates remains absent. And Senator Tate? No. Sure, I have eight yes votes and three no votes. Having a quorum and a vote eight to three, House Bill 45 EX passes the committee and now rest in the Rules Committee. We will, um, I have at, my, at 10 09, we will take a short break. I'm sure there will be some people that uh, want to come in, those want to leave, so we'll let that happen and we'll take up at 10 15 that we will reconvene for the purpose of taking up the congressional maps. All right, bring forth the, the congressional. Um, again, we, as you see right here, has demonstrated what we did. We've worked, I worked very closely with Chairman Lane in, in adopting the, um, uh, in working on the congressional. Um, we started with working with different um, plans to have an opportunity to, um, um, to have a discussion and then the discussion, we got House leadership, Senate leadership together, and um, can you close that door, please? And um, in doing so, um, uh, along with the governor, we came up with a plan. When that plan was made public last Monday, um, there was some some members, from the congressional members that, that um, can you close the doors, please? From the map that was released from um, being public, there were four changes that were made. One was uh, adding Moody Air Force Base back to uh, Congressman Kingston's district. Um, the second uh, change that was made is that uh, there were some changes that were made in Fayette County from the uh, citizens having uh, making requests about changing some, some precincts to try to stay in the 8th district, of which Fayette County right now is totally in the 8th district. The uh, third change was to uh, put a board member in the third district to avoid a coupling of uh, board members, and that was in the Columbus area. And then the um, fourth change was slight changes in Fulton County between the 11th and the 6th district with the congressional offices being involved. Um, those changes were reviewed uh, and discussed. The House voted it out. House passed it. With regard to our uh, um, principles that we had, from the population uh, equality, our principal stated we would draw the maps between uh, plus or minus one person. This plan does that. Uh, the plan adheres to the Voting Rights Act in that um, 
Our benchmark were three majority minority districts. Uh, this plan has four majority minority districts. Um, when it comes to when it comes to county splits, uh, in 2002, uh, the plan that was drawn then was it split 34 counties. In 2005, the revision split 20. This splits 16. In precincts, in 2002 was 88. In 2005 was 106. And the plan before you splits less than 30 precincts. Uh, when it comes to compactness, uh, it's a 0.26. Remember, we want to get the closest you can get to one. And um, the 2005 plan was 0.25. And um, the least compact was is 0.16 in this one with the 2005 plan being 0.12, and then the, the highest was 0.37, and 2005 was 0.40. The incumbent core, again, this was not one of our uh, uh, adopted principles, but is a traditional principle, and since we talked about it in the Senate plan, I put it out there for demonstration, is a 67.8%, which means um, basically that two-thirds of the citizens of Georgia will vote in the same congressional district in 2012 that they did in 2010. Um, so with that, uh, we have some public comments. I'm going to give them a sheet out and work through it. Again, I'm, everybody signed up to do these things um, on one sheet of paper. If I inadvertently skip, you don't hesitate to raise your hand. And, uh, and again, we are in limited time. Um, we need to be out of this room by 1130. And so I ask everybody to please keep that in mind as we as we go through this in that. With that, Ed Painter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Ed Painter from Dalton, a part of the citizen advocacy group that we call Northwest Georgia for the Northwest Georgians. Uh, most of y'all may know a little history on this. When you had the public hearing in Dalton, June the 20th, our uh, Board of Commissioners Chairman Mike Babb made a little two-minute speech at the end of it asking that y'all consider running our ninth district at that time north and south instead of east and west. Uh, two days later, I had started working on a plan. We had no intentions prior to that date of doing it. Called him. He was all for it, so we started on it. Uh, actually, we consider ourselves to be visible evidence that the legislators are keeping their word this time, encouraging citizen input actually considering that input in their decision making. Every time we presented this at uh, multiple county boards of commissioners, city councils or other meetings, we were always told by an elected official or a citizen that is politically active that it was simply too simple, too logical, and made too much sense to ever be considered. So uh, with that, we move forward. Uh, the legislator has uh, actually wound up introducing maps that we consider to be on the surface uh, citizen friendly. It's uh, a reasonable map just to look at. It's easy on the eye, you might say. Uh, after we introduced our, uh, our little map for the Northwest Georgia District, uh, we were asked at the House com uh, Committee on Reapportionment and by the Speaker at a meeting later in LJ. Uh, what about the other 13 districts? We were only concerned with our district. So as an exercise, we drew a map that we placed down here on August the 15th at the, uh, at the uh, map fair. There was only one other group that participated in that. And now the reason I bring that up is after uh, sitting through a lot of these meetings and, and watching many meetings on uh, video that uh, y'all held, I find that... Uh, I find the groups that actually chose not to participate by putting forth a real plan uh, lose credibility with me when they criticize the plans that are put forward. But I wanted to uh, address that today because I consider it, uh, I, I consider that y'all made, in our case, a reasonable effort. We got our representatives and our senator working on it, and we feel that we had an impact. Uh, probably the first time in Georgia's history that citizens actually had an impact on drawing a congressional district. Yesterday, uh, Georgia Public Broadcasting had an article which they called for independent redistricting. Just so happens last week I was at a Health Care Compact Summit in Houston. We had 35 other states represented there by multiple people. One of those states 
was California. Now, we talked about redistricting quite a bit because everybody's going through it. They have an independent committee out there. And to the person, they said that the problem with it was it was less transparency. Matter of fact, they said there was none. And there was no accountability for the result because those aren't elected officials. So in our case, I don't know how your uh, constituents are, but we're rather partial to accountability in our area, as Senator Bethel well knows. Uh, and also, uh, I like the uh, partisan give and take. I find many of the questions I've heard in these committee meetings to be informative from the Democrats, uh, and the answers informative from the Republicans, and vice versa. I, I think that that helps the whole process. We know it's a political process. We know the whenever you have uh, political parties in, in power that uh, they're going to control basically the process. We just hope it's as fair and, uh, and good for the citizens as is possible. Now, our map that we drew, of course, uh, uh, was drawn basically on uh, what we call, or what was called aspirational guidelines, a term I was introduced to by Chairman Seaball last week. Uh, we, we, we were the ones who made this mess here today, putting these maps up. We found it uh, informative. We'd heard all about maps, so we just put them all together to see what they looked like. And uh, we took into consideration as much as possible the legal requirements. We, we don't have legal counsel. We don't have access to computer programs, the numbers required to do this. And actually, uh, uh, it was a rather a shock when the map came out last Monday. We were here, and it looked very similar to what we had drawn out uh, basically freehand. So I see no reason that other groups with more resources couldn't actually get involved. Uh, the uh, other thing I wanted to address, and, I, and this is personal uh, or partially personal, my son-in-law and his sister are both uh, uh, naturalized citizens from Chile. My son-in-law came here 25 years ago, could not speak a word of en English as an exchange student. He's uh, active in the community. He's on the downtown uh, development board. He's a director. Uh, his sister is very active politically, as is my wife, who's uh, from Korea. Uh, and we consider, uh, uh, whenever he hears the Latin Latino community of interest, uh, as far as he's concerned, my wife's concerned, we're all in the same community of interest. The schools are absolutely critical to all of us. So is our health care. So is the just the general overall conditions of our daily lives. So we feel that we're all sitting in the same community of interest, and, we, and they don't like being separated, neither uh, do we. So I, I wanted to take the opportunity to uh, mention that. Uh, and at, at that, I will be brief, since I had the opportunity to address a, a non-controversial subject, congressional redistricting, or relatively non-controversial today. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Any questions? Thank you very much. Excuse me, George McClellan. Again, please state your name and where you're from. For Thank the, you, Mr. For Chairman. I'm George McClellan, uh, just like the general, but not related. I'm from. I'm the uh, chairman of the Gilmer County Republican Party in LJ. But after listening to Henry County, our problems pale in comparison. And like Henry County, we too came a long way this morning. Got up early, but as it is downhill, it wasn't such a a hard drive. I want to thank you for the opportunity uh, to add our concerns to the official record of fair and equitable redistribution. At present, Gilmer County sits smack in the middle of the 9th District. With the new direction, we will be on the very outer edge. As a rural county with 28,000 people, and we will look to, we look to Hull County now as a black hole, which will suck probably all of the influence that we've ever had before in the political process. During the recent regional authority hearings, Gimmer wanted to stay in the Northeast, and we were put in the Northwest section. Well now, with these new maps, we're not in the Northwest section politically, but we're still with them in the regional authority. Rural counties belong, like, like the Northwest, belong together, Gilmer, Fannin, Pickens are rural counties and we really belong in the new 14th district and that's my observation any questions thank you very much you're entirely welcome sir thank you for the opportunity
Thank you. Bill Craig with the Gilmer County Chamber of Commerce. Um, and I won't re repeat what the, the previous two gentlemen have said, but I, but I will echo their comments and that uh, we support the map that they, they created. Um, and thank you for this opportunity. You know, I'm a businessman in Gilmer County. I'm not an, ele an elected official per se, although I am head of the Chamber of Commerce. And this is a lot about relationships that are built over the years. It's not so much about who our congressman is. It's about relationships that we built with Northwest Georgia, uh, be it the service area uh, and how that deals with economic development. This is also about our position on the Northwest Georgia Regional Commission and how this redistricting will affect that. We've built relationships with people in Northwest Georgia for many, many years now. And I can see co situations coming up where we've got issues that we have to deal with in Northwest Georgia, and at the same time, we have congressional issues we'll have to deal with in the new district. Uh, today, for instance, I'm supposed to be in Rome, Georgia with the governor's uh, competitiveness seminar, but I felt it was more important to be down here today. So I just ask you to, to reconsider and take a good look at this. I grew up in Athens, Georgia, spent a lot of time in Hall County. I know that part of the state very well. Uh, my great-great-grandfather was a congressman from Dahlonega. He was in the 41st and 42nd Congress in the 1800s. So I do have a history in North, Northeast Georgia. Love that part of the state, but I've lived in Northwest Georgia now for seven years. It's different. Northwest Georgia is very different from Northeast Georgia. And we just feel like that's where we need to be. So th thank you for the opportunity to, to address the subject. Thank you very much. Any questions? All right, thank you. Senator Steve Gooch. Morning. I'll be brief. <clears throat> First of all, I want to thank all of you gentlemen and ladies for all the work you've done. Back in April when we left here, the night after Sonny died, most of us didn't come back to the Capitol except on occasion, and I know most of y'all have come back weekly, and I know, Chairman, you, you were here every day because I talked to you many times, and the times I did come back, you were always here. So I'm glad you're on reapportionment, not me. But uh, growing up on a poultry farm, I learned uh, at a young age you don't always get everything you want in life. And then when I became sole commissioner of Lumpkin County, I thought that would change, but I found out real quick that doesn't necessarily mean that either. So being down here, I've learned a lot about all of us and, and how we have to work together. Uh, with that said, I have to say on behalf of the citizens of the 51st District, uh, I've had a lot of calls, comments from people. For South County, I want to make a comment about them first. Uh, one of the most Republican districts in the state, fastest growing county in the state, grew 78 percent the last 10 years. There, uh, There's some concerns there about being split. They want to try to keep their county whole. Uh, I want you to know that. If you haven't heard from them, you probably will. Senator Murphy has some concerns there as well. And the folks that you heard that are sitting behind me, my supporters from Gilmer County, uh, I've had comments from Pickens, Gilmer, and Fannin. They're concerned about being moved back over to a new congressional district, which looks like the ninth will be inverted, just flipped over. Instead of going from Gainesville on the far right-hand side up to the northwest corner of the state, it'll be just the opposite. Uh, T today we currently border Alabama, Tennessee, South Carolina, uh, North Carolina. The new proposed ninth will border uh, Tennessee, North Carolina, and South Carolina. So we're still going to border three states. There's a lot of commonality there in the, the new proposed district, but I think some of the issues that were brought up before have some merit to look at. But I appreciate all you've done so far this year, and uh, I look forward to working with you guys in the, in the Senate. Thank you. Thank you very much. The senator doesn't yield for questions. William Perry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, I just wanted to rise today to kind of speak uh, opposite to what was offered earlier, and that I think that an independent commission in this process would be extremely helpful. Georgia History 2001, a Republican minority leader in the House proposed an independent commissioner commission. In uh, 2006, Governor Purdue appointed a task force. Senator Chance sponsored an independent commission. And then this past year, 2011, Senator Jason Carter 
sponsored a bill for an independent commission. There's been, uh, on both sides um, of the aisle, support for independent commissions. And I think this process has shown, again, the need for it as partisan as it's been. Um, and considering the congressional maps and looking at that, you can almost uh, see um, the partisanship that's involved in those districts. Um, oftentimes, uh, sh the shape of a district doesn't tell the story. But I think if we look at the 11th congressional district, that looks like elephant ears sticking out of the elephant's head with its trunk swinging down into Fulton County and Atlanta to pick up peanuts in the buckhead, looks like a, drap um, a partisan map. So we would hope that now that this process is nearing complete and we have a number of years before the process begins again, that both sides of the aisle will process that is less political and less partisan. I appreciate your time and we'll be glad to answer any questions. Any questions? Any questions? Uh, Senator Henson. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, as this process is now nearing its conclusion, uh, you, you made some remarks earlier in the previous thing about the transparency. What, what do you think about the fair, open, transparent nature of this? Has, you know, we haven't really seen much change since the bill got in the legislature, so I don't really know if we've been able to, I know as a minority party, I don't feel we feel fully engaged in offering up recommendations and having a give and take. What are your thoughts about the process? Yes, sir. Well, I, I agree with the line that's been said many times. I think the process was more transparent than it was 10 years ago. I don't think that the bar was raised extremely high, that it was still low, and the process could have been much more transparent. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Um, we've had some confusion. Is there anybody here that wants to speak on the congressional map? With that, um, do I hear a motion with regard to House Bill 20 EX LC 285825S? I have a motion due pass. Do I have a second? second. I have a second. Uh, is there any discussion? Senator Henson. Uh, first of all, Mr. Chairman, I assume you're, you're the master drawer of this map, so I have a few questions. Um, would you characterize the decision making on how the developed 12th district is to be based solely on political uh, design or were there other motives and, and could you kind of explain uh, how that developed the, and, and if I will elaborate the 12th district is almost perfect in population uh, when this process began uh, so could you kind of tell us how and why uh, it was changed so much? As I said at the beginning, um, we had a series of public who spoke with um, the chairman on the House side, uh, Representative Lane. There were members of the Senate that had spoken with me about their input with regard to congressional plans. And, Senator, I think that um, you have enough working knowledge that um, that when you have 13 congressional districts and you're adding a 14th you can't keep all the districts the same and when you make changes to some districts it inherently makes changes to other districts um, and so there is a number of considerations that were taken into account in working uh, to come up with a congressional plan and of course the number one uh, is the legal requirement that we have a one person one vote to ensure that we have the population to be drawn to plus or minus one person. So there's a, a number of factors that go into uh, making uh, decisions, and there were a lot of people involved in making those decisions. Okay. Chairman will further yield for a couple questions. I yield. Um, the, uh, I will. Discussion on the previous maps included discussion about a benchmark, and you know some districts that were included in that benchmark. <coughs> Did you, or could you tell us which districts in this congressional map you considered part of the benchmark? The benchmark were the 4th, the 5th, and the 13th districts. And although, Mr. Chairman, we've had this discussion before, you did not consider the 10th, um, which was in the 43% range, to be either in the benchmark or a consideration? No, it was not. 
No, I said the 10th, I meant 12th. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Senator, when you were drawing the maps, was it a constant uh, or a continual process where you did look at Democrat, Republican voting performances while you were drawing the uh, map? Again, Senator, I said there were many factors that went into um, making the decision and there was a lot of input in trying to to look at those factors. Um, but uh, political performance was not the predominant primary factor in used in making any decisions with regard to any of our maps. So, Mr. Chairman, I believe that I have brought to you, or my staff has brought to you a substitute. I would like, there was two, the latest, adjusted the house changes we'd like to present that as a substitute and at proper time i'll briefly discuss that and i believe uh, now would be a good time okay i would like to bring forth my substitute mr chairman i believe your office has copies of it we have a substitute being offered by senator henson um we will pass that out now and i believe that that is lc 285831s is that correct senator I just want to make sure that the First Amendment that you gave me, you're not asking for that That's for correct. any consideration. Okay. That's correct. So if that, that being the case, members of the committee, this will be the only amendment that will be considered because this, this amendment was offered by the 24-hour deadline um, that we have in the committee. And so, with that, Senator Henson, I'll recognize you for the presentation of uh, your amendment and your plan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, Mr. Chairman, I think that one thing that you brought out many times is the amount of the districts that remain whole and part of the original districts to be retained or retention of the original district. In the congressional maps, when we looked at these congressional plans at the beginning of the year, or beginning of this process, the 12th district was only a few hundred people over that of a perfect congressional plan. So this reapportionment uh, substitute I provide to you basically tries to create the lowest amount of change throughout the state possible and tries to maintain the highest level of retention of the core of all the districts. 12th district which I feel was changed for partisan political reasoning reasons, which certainly is part of this process, but also by doing so disenfranchised the community population, which have been effective in electing the candidate of their choice in the 12th district. Uh, this substitute will allow the 12th district to remain relatively unchanged, not lessen the minority participation in that district, allow all the other districts to retain as much of their core as possible and be based as friendly as it can be to the chairman's map uh, creating the 14th and the uh, similar place, et cetera. So the key of this map is that the 12th district does not have the retrogression that we see in the chairman's proposed plan or the committee's uh, considered plan uh, and I would uh, urge you all to seriously consider trying to retain a higher level of core of the original districts try to make sure that we don't have retrogression in this map so that we don't have legal challenges that cost the state money and retire and try to retain uh, again the best map for as many citizens to Georgia as possible. So I propose that we adopt, and my eyesight's getting mad, but my substitute, I can't read that. I have to get the bill number, LC 2858. 5831S. Thank you. Are there any questions? Senator Kowser. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Henson. I lost a little bit there in the translation, but was there another amendment to any other maps that you had drawn as well? Uh, we had put in a uh, initial substitute to this map that the committee proposed or that came out of the 
House. Uh, but when the House amended that map in committee, we went and reflected those changes and redraw our substitute to reflect those changes. Our goal was to uh, try to incorporate a map that prevented retrogression, that tried to maintain a high level of core, and yet deviated as little as possible for the map submitted by the majority party. So we basically went and made those changes. That, that was our intent. That you're talking about Kong Prop 2, the one we've got mm -hmm. before us that's passed the House, is what you use that as your basis for drawing this? That's correct. Right. How does your map differ from that? Tell me how each of these districts on your plan differs from that Congressional Prop 2 that we've been considering. Certainly. As you can see, the 12th district, which is the district which is most heavily affected by retrogression in the proposed congressional map from the, the uh, House that we're considering, now is the original 12th district minus only 500 votes to give it a perfect one man, one vote rule uh, uh, balance. That, in doing so, parts of what is presently the 10th district that were taken from the 12th district or reunited the 12th district. The 10th district then picks up some of its population by going a little more into the, uh, toward butts but not including butts, uh, Monroe, part of um, let's see. Oh, more, yeah, mostly Columbia County. Yeah, they picked up most of that core back from the Columbia County, the Gabe area. So you know, and then the. The progression affected the other districts much less. You'll see very little change in the 14th, the 9th, the 3rd, but you'll see changes in the 1st district again in reestablishing that core of the 12th and reestablishing the 43 or 44 percent minority population you, you, you have. You again see some changes to the top of the 1st district and the eastern part of the 8th district, but uh, in general the map is as unchanged as possible. My follow up, Mr. Chairman. Yes, please. Would you agree that the main change you made was to make the twelfth district more likely to be won by a Democrat? I believe that that is a possibility. The fact is that the Voting Rights Act does consider minority voting, <clears throat> and I certainly uh, did not prejudge who they would vote for a minority population but that we have to consider the fact that if we're trying to be fair and trying to make sure minorities have a role in our political landscape, then to take a 43% district where they have an effective minority voice, where they can choose a candidate of their choice and take that away simply because some people on this committee thinks that it might be more likely that they elect a Democrat than Republican, I think is wrong. So, but it's okay to make it more likely to elect a Democrat than a Republican? When you have a history of violating the rights of minorities in the state, uh, I think it would be a much better tool to allow that minority to have an effective voice and then go to that community as a Republican and say, this is why I should be the person you need to elect, not try to dismantle minority votes into small groups so they have no effective voice and no impact to either Democrats or Republicans who want to run in those districts. You, you've made a point that the 12th district was very close to the proper size. Correct. Were you aware that the 8th district is drawn on, uh, or as it existed, was only 3.4 percent off of a perfect size district? It was close, but it still was not as close as the 12th district. Yes, but I knew it was close. You went and made more changes to the 8th district in your plan as well then? There, there are some changes to the 8th district, but still the core of the 8th, uh, I don't have it right in front of me, but I think it's a, about an equal percentage in both plans. You, but I'll check. you agree that your plan, in your plan, the 8th district is 
more likely to elect a Democrat than the Kong Prop 2 plan? To be honest with you, I'm not aware. I'm not, I'd have to take a look. Did you have any hand in drawing this map? Yeah, I, I had some involvement and input, but I did not sit with the person in the reapportionment office and done and did it because the real core of drawing this map was done in the house or in a collaboration outside of here. The I'm talking about of, your map. My map, yes, I had a roll and draw on my map, but my map was drawn to conform with certain parameters, and that parameter was A, what you had brought over from the house and brought to us, trying to conform with that, and B, trying to avoid retrogression in the best of my ability. Where did you draw it? I did not personally draw the map. You know who did? Chris Hutman helped us draw the map. Who, tell me, who, who is that? He's someone that I have paid something out of my campaign to help me draw maps. Who was present when he, when Chris Hutzman drew the map? I do not know all the people, if anyone is present. Did uh, Congressman Barra give you any input into this plan? Not directly. He didn't talk to me. Did his staff give input and assistance in drawing? To, they didn't talk to me directly. Did they talk to anybody that had a hand in drawing the maps? I believe that we drew this map mainly to try to prevent a lawsuit. The House, I believe, in the House side, a map was presented that was a collaboration between Democratic members of the House delegation. And this is not that map, if that's what you're getting at. Were any other congressmen consulted or give any input in drawing up your map? I believe not, but probably as much as they got, the Democratic congressmen got and drawn uh, some of their districts. Did the Democratic National Committee have any input in drawing your map? Not to my knowledge. No, they didn't. Did you get any legal advice in the process of drawing your map, your substitute? Uh, yeah, I mean, as far as general legal advice and discussions about the retrogression issue, uh, the senator from the 42nd was here earlier, and he has uh, been the conduit of much of my legal advice. Any other outside attorneys other than Senator Carter? Uh, besides staff, Meg Robinson and, and others, I haven't talked to anybody in D.C. or uh, in drawing this map, focused on re retrogression principles that we have discussed in this committee time and time again. I think that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other questions? Senator Bethel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a few questions, and if I uh, over exhaust your indulgence, please feel free to stop me if that's all right. Um, I, know what, I know what it's like answering questions on this <laughs> subject matter, so feel free. Um, Senator, I understand the House Committee that Congressman Lewis uh, addressed uh, what I believe to have been a concern that splitting Atlanta, the city of Atlanta, somehow was a violation of the Voting Rights Act. Do, do you agree with that characterization? I did not hear his speech, so I would be unable to comment on, comment on it. Would you agree with that, that, that somehow splitting a, a, a municipality would, would in any way violate a voting, the Voting in Rights Act? In and of it by itself, one issue would not be able to be considered in its, in, in its soul. If you were talking about breaking up an effective community, for instance, of minority voters, or you know, lowering the proposition, lowering the numbers, or what, what that does to the community at large and holding a minority community together, Congressman would know better than myself, so I, I can't comment. It, it, it is true that, that your plan not only splits Atlanta, but also splits Savannah and Augusta, which, which the con prop does not. The fact is that it keeps a large part of the minority community together in the 12th district, and yes, there are some splits in those areas. So felt to maintain an effective minority district in 12th, that was appropriate. Okay. You, you mentioned earlier retrogression, which is, of course, a, a buzzword. Um, can you tell us, do, do you contend that the 12th district, as it's configured in Kong Prop 2, what, what passed the House, is a violation of the Voting Rights Act? 
What I'm saying is that I have a concern that it may violate the Ro Ro Voting Rights Act because it lowers the effective minority voting population in that district. And I'm going to or ask for analysis to be done to make sure that those elements are need that, that are needed are there. But basically, when you lower a 43.3 percent district to a 30.4 percent district, and then past analysis of voting performances in this state, it takes that community away from being an effective minority district. Back in the 90s, uh, you know, when I was first went through apportionment, there was the term, you know, influence districts and 40 and over. Uh, but, you know, things, of course, have progressed and changed, but it is very apparent when a certain minority community has the voting strength to affect change or affect electing a candidate of their choice. And I think the 12th meets that standard. Okay. So you believe that there's at least a concern. You, you, the analysis you're talking about has not been conducted? You, you, you said you intend to do it? Preliminary, but yes, not completely. And okay. We'll, so we'll try to do that for the justice. Okay. So you believe that there is a potential Section 5 retrogression issue in that district? That is my belief. Do you have any other belief in terms of Section 2 or any other element of the Voting Rights Act that is somehow um, jeopardized by our passage of the bill that passed the House? I mean, is that, is that the sole complaint? No. First of all, I am not an attorney representing uh, the entire plan. I'm pre preparing to you an alternative which prevents retrogression in the 12th. So I'll say this. I believe that this map is a better map and that it helps prevent retrogression in the 12th. I will not sit here today and do not yield to a question to ask me whether or not, or I just, just don't know the answer to every aspect that you have diluted, work, weakened, or not met every standard of the Voting Rights Act. I do not know those questions. So, so, Mr. You know, I Leader, just, I, I understand that, and, and I, I respect it. I'm not, yeah. I, I really am not trying to have you speak for somebody else or speak, you know, for everybody who might have a claim. You can't do that anyway because everybody has standing on their own. But uh, there was discussion earlier today when we were talking about another bill uh, about the author not being here and not being able to ask questions. And, and I'm simply trying to ask, you're the proponent of the bill, so I'm just simply trying to ask you Absolutely. all my questions because, again, you're it. Yeah. So I, I respect that, and I'll accept your answer. Well, and I'll further that. Your question asked me to create a judgment on the underlying bill. My substitute tried to address the most egregious thing in my mind or biggest problem, which was the retrogression in the 12th. So I did not look at the map in the few days I've had, you know, to be able to address everything in the underlying bill that, that we tried to join it with. Okay. So I, I just want to... Okay, I, yeah. I understand, Senator. I, I, I just have trouble processing the fact that there may be other problems, but we're not going to address them with our bill. I mean, that, that's what I hear you saying, so I, I, Absolutely. I, but I respect that. Um, let's see. You, you mentioned earlier influence districts you, you, from your past history. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me how the historical definition of an influence district differs from what you're arguing is some sort of retrogression analysis on the 12th? No, I cannot. Oh, okay. Uh, at, at present, you know, the more common terms are crossover district and whether it's something is an effective minority district, which I believe the 12th is. is. Am I understanding it correctly if I were to say that you're talking about a minority population of such a size that it, that it has what I'll call an indirect influence on the outcome of, of an election. In other words, they, independent of their own, don't constitute a majority, but they have an indirect influence on the outcome? They have a direct influence. By their votes, they have a direct influence on the outcome. That may mean that other members of the community uh, are participatory, you know, that there's crossover vo voting or coalition voting, but they have an impact, and they have a direct impact on the outcome of election. Okay. I think indirect would be improper, or not the best way to say that. So, so in... They don't have um, in totality. You're talking about coalition, but so, so a minority group or a minority population 
coalesces or somehow joins forces with some other group or groups, I guess plural, and then they so they select a candidate of choice, and that's that, that's who is elected. Is that correct? I mean, is that the theory? I'm just, I'm, just, I'm I'm wanting to understand. Yeah, I wasn't following exactly as you kind of went off there, but but I believe what we said, what I said previously, was the same thing you just said, that a minority population uh, has an effect, a direct effect, on the election that. And that minority community effectively can choose a candidate in that election or make a direct impact in that election by either coalition with white voters or other minority groups or crossover basically with white right. white voters. Okay. I guess what I'm, I'm just, I'm not, I'm just, when you say direct, I, they don't have the independent population to control it absent, they, they would have to engage in some sort of coalition building under your theory. I mean, they, is that not mathematically I true? That would be correct. Okay. Um, As the chairman reminded you, I'm not an attorney, so <laughs> try to take your law degree and don't, don't beat me too bad with it. Well, I, this is math. I'm not, you know, I, I, and, I, and I'm not a math major, so, so I'm just trying to understand the theory, not, not the legal theory, the, the intellectual theory behind saying what's protected and what isn't. Okay, that's that's why. And, and 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 Senator, you you can uh, uh, can be assured that I do not maintain myself to be an absolute expert on that fact, but I believe that this will uh, find itself in court, and I'm more than welcome to have you ask these questions to Ann Lewis <laughs> and have Ann Lewis answer those questions, uh, who help and she may not agree with me, I can respond to that. But, uh, or Jeff Lanier, if you want some talk about what, because he talked before about what, you know, the old term for influence district and best he could say now for uh, effective minority district and other sure. things. But, but I'm more than happy to, you know, continue in this vein. But I, I just want to remind you, I'm not a legal expert nor try to make my uh, uh, knowledge to plant that at the Supreme Court. I, 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 <laughs> that's Congress's job. Um, yeah. S Senator, um, is, there, is there a benchmark for uh, your, your theory? In other words, when we've talked earlier about the benchmark and we've said the benchmark for the guidelines and for the Justice Department, is there, is there a benchmark for for determining what is a um, coalition district, what, what I mean yeah. is the there answer I, I think is the benchmark is where that minority population can be effective in choosing or their candidate of their choice, and that may not be a benchmark of, for instance, fifty nine percent mm -hmm. in the city of Atlanta or thirty three percent in in South Georgia. It, it would have a lot of factors. It would have a you would have to include voter participation and turnout. The uh, possible coalitions that minority populations could work with, right. or other minority populations. So, th no, there is not a, and that's what I feel is wrong about this committee's actions, is that it says that there is a 50 percent, you know, threshold right. for the benchmark. And my feeling is that that 50 percent isn't fair nor true. That depending on what the voter participation is, the amount of registered voters, how much turnout, and other, and so many other factors that you cannot set that hard and fast 50% guideline. And that in this process that we are not taking consideration uh, minority populations, or, and if we are, we're doing it in a, in a, in a negative fashion. <laughs> we're, we're saying that, yes, a minority population uh, has an effect in election at a certain percent, but because they choose to, in many cases, elect Democrats, we are going to purposely make sure that they stay under that threshold of where they have an effective minority district or have an effect on the election, instead of politically trying to go to minority communities and affect how they vote, we instead dilute and underrepresent them in districts so they don't have an effective voice in the legislature or in this case Congress. Okay. So you mentioned that 
in assessing that you would take in a, a multitude of factors. So, so you would sort of, like t the totality of circumstances, you, you got to judge each district on its own on all these factors before you can make a determination. You can't sort of just have a bright line rule. Correct. Okay. You, you um, You also said something, and, and, and forgive me. I'm just a little bit sure. of a historical stickler on this. And I, and I, if I misunderstood you, I, I do want you to correct it because, in your comments, you said something. And I think you were responding to uh, Senator Kowser uh, that you know, when you have a history of discriminating against minorities, you think it's better. And then you said, you know, a Republican could then go to a minority population and say, "You should vote for me because." And I just want to be clear that that. You were not indicating that Republicans or the Republican Party had anything to do with Georgia's history of racial discrimination that led to the Voting Rights Act. No, no, those were kind of separate. Uh, okay, I, 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 I just I wanted right. to make sure I understood. No, no, I, 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 and I appreciate that. I understand that. your point, and certainly not. Okay, um, I think, Mr. Chairman, that that's all the questions I have. Okay, any other, Senator Ford. I have questions on the underlying bill, Mr. Chair. We have the amendment on the floor right now. Okay. Any other questions? Um, Senator, I have a couple questions. Um, can you explain to me how your plan complies with the Voting Rights Act? I believe that it applies more effectively than yours because it takes into account uh, Minority effective minority districts, districts where populations of minorities may be below 50 percent, but may have an effect or an effective district where they are able to elect the candidate of their choice. Okay, would you would you explain how? And I believe that your the, plan uh, how specifically is in compliance with Section Two. Um, to be honest with you, I. I believe that was more of a section five, but I am not a lawyer. I can't answer that. And you know, my okay. Then can you can you explain five. how it complies with section five? Section five. Well, as far as I understand, Mr. Chairman, it is preventing the retrogression of the twelfth district, among other things, but mainly focused on the twelfth district, trying to prevent retrogression of the minority population. We have not, again, as I mentioned, as sen previous senator, tried to address possibly every issue or draw a map that, you know, encompasses any angle or problems that we might have with this map. This substitute is based primarily on the uh, original underlying map and trying to prevent a high retrogression in the uh, districts as brought to us in the so, so you're you're saying that as far as the underlying plan, um, the only issue that you take is um, is uh, the issues you've raised with regard to um, District 12, and all no. the other components of this underlying plan. Um, no, I think I made you it believe are okay. No, I think I made it clear. I do not. Neither have I anal analyzed every aspect of the underlying plan. Senator, why would you bring us a plan that that? Only one one fourteenth of it, you say, addresses an issue, but the rest of the of the plan you would submit, in uh, identical to, I mean, even going to great lengths mm -hmm. to make the four changes that were made in the House mm -hmm. uh, to adhere to that. I mean, if you didn't support the the components of the map and that, why would you go to such great lengths just to to deal with one district and not anything else? Because, Mr. Chairman, I have a limited amount of time, as you know, to deal with the system and the process. And we had a limited amount of time to get these uh, maps to you. Second of all, the consideration that the House brought to the, uh, the the congressional delegation, Democratic delegation in the House plan, you know, brought a substitute, and that was uh, not passed, not accepted. So therefore, in trying to bring a bill that created a, a minimum amount of change from the one that you brought and try to address one very important issue, which was the retrogression 12th issue, that is the substitute that I brought. I did not, nor do I propose to have analyzed every aspect of your map and try to address any other concerns. But I feel, quite frankly, that the major concern in this map is the 12th district 
and the retrogression that occurs therein. Does your plan um, meet the requirements of the, US, the United States Constitution? Does my substitute? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, it improves and, and is more likely to reach that threshold than the underlying map. It is not the map that I would, you know, have drawn in a uh, separate environment where you just had me draw my map. So I'm not going to say that I know. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know whether, you know, uh, every aspect of your underlying map meets the U.S. constitutional threshold or not. How did you consider county boundaries? Tried to maintain them to a uh, significant degree. How did you consider boundaries of precincts in your plan? Try to maintain them to a significant degree. How did you consider compactness? Try to maintain the districts as compact as possible, maintaining the uh, 12th district in its well, and whether or not uh, you have not maintained good community interest in the second or the third or the 14th or the 11th were not issues that I tried to address. So you're saying you submitted an incomplete plan? I'm saying that if your underlying bill is incomplete, then I certainly did, and I'll happily uh, you know, put off doing both of these things until January, Mr. Chairman. Is there any other criteria used in drafting your plan? Not off the top of my head, Mr. Chairman. Um, did Congressman Bishop vote for the reauthorization of the Voting Rights Act in 2006? Not, I don't have any idea, Mr. Chairman. Did Congressman Lewis vote for the reauthorization of the Voting Rights Act in 2006? I don't have any idea, Mr. Chairman. Did Congressman Scott well, vote for the reauthorization know. of the Voting Rights Act in 2006? I do not know, Mr. Chairman. Um, Senator, I have one last question. Uh, could you explain, when you, you mentioned as far as the, the individual that drew, drew the map, Chris Hutman, um, who does he work for? Uh, I don't know what his, he, I, I paid him some money. Or my, what does he do? What does he do all the other time other than the money that you paid for him for the, for the project? I believe, I, I'm not exactly sure all Chris does. I, I know he does some political work. You do, should know, Chris. <laughs> do you know, who he, does, he do you know who, who he works with as far as the political work that he does? DeSantos or Bobby Kahn, some? <laughs> Which one of those do you want, Mr. Well, you're the one that brought up Bobby Kahn. Was it not Bobby? Was he not involved in the drawing of the 2001 maps? Heal your wounds, Mr. Chairman, and try to move on. <laughs> I have a counselor in my district that can do you wonders. After this is over, maybe a chiropractor. Too. Senator, I believe you submitted um, uh, your amendment. Are there any other questions on the amendment? Um, on the amendment? <coughs> Well, let me do this first. And I, I don't know for sure that I did this, but uh, you've submitted it, so I have. you're making a motion for the amendment of, of that. Did I get a second on that motion? Second. Okay, I just want to make sure it's very clear that we that took care of that. Um, Senator Ford. Yes, Mr. Leader, do you believe, it, it's my assumption that you believe that the Voting Rights Act protects minority voters in having being able to vote for a candidate of their choice, not only in 50% plus one districts, but in 50% minus one districts as well, that minority voters should be protected and ought to be protected and are protected by the Voting Rights Act in 50% plus one or 50% minus one or maybe even 50% minus 8% districts. Is that correct? Correct, Mr. Chairman. Uh, correct, correct uh, Senator, that they should uh, be recognized under the Voting Rights Act, regardless of whether it's a 50 plus one district or not, and that we should not intentionally dilute districts to say that the candidate they may wish to vote for has no chance to be a participant in this election, so, you know, in the election. Uh, and, Mr. Leader, isn't, isn't it true that I had to wait two months to find out? the job description of people who were employed by the state of Georgia over in the reapportionment office two months. At least. And you gave more information in two minutes <laughs> than uh, we received in two months of asking for. Isn't that true, Mr. Leader? I think I tried to answer the questions in an open and fair process. Thank you. Thank you. 
Any other questions on the amendment? I have a motion of an amendment to the underlying bill, uh, that amendment being LC 285831S, offered by Senator Henson. I have a second. All those in favor of the amendment will vote yes. Those opposed will vote no. Ask the secretary to call the roll for the purpose of taking a vote. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Cowson, no. I'll mark myself in the negative, Mr. Chairman. Senator Balfour, absent. Senator Chance, no. Senator Fort, yes. Senator Harbison, no. Senator Henson, yes. Senator Judson Hill, no. Senator Jackson, no. Senator Rogers, no. Senator Schaefer remains absent. Senator State. Senator Tate? Yes. Senator Tolleson? No. President Pro Tem? No. Mr. Chairman, I have three yes and four and nine no. Three yeses and nine no's. The amendment fails. Um, the underlying motion that we have is on the congressional plan LC 285825. Yes, Senator Ford, I believe you had a question before we took a vote. Yeah, I, I do. Um, and I guess it's either for you or for the, the author of the, the bill. Um, you said that there were three, that the plan that is being proposed, the underlying bill, went from three benchmark uh, majority minority districts to four. Can you tell me where, what that fourth one is? The benchmark was the 4th, the 5th, and the 13th. The four majority-minority districts in this plan are the 4th, the 5th, the 13th, and the 2nd. Okay. Which one went from majority... Uh, which one went from uh, a majority-minority majority district to a majority-minority district? If you said you went from 3 to 4, which what is the 4th? Which the, one? In the benchmark, was the, the benchmark had the 4th, the 5th, and the 13th. I understand. The plan before you has four majority-minority districts, those being the 4th, the 5th, the 13th, and the 2nd. So the, the second was the new majority-minority district, is that correct? There are four majority-minority districts in this plan, the 4th, the 5th, the 13th, and the 2nd. Okay. And... Previously, As you know, Senator, when we look at these plans and in, in looking for uh, conformity with the Voting Rights Act, we have to look at the entire plan. I understand. But the, previously it was the 4th, 5th, and the 13th. Now it's the 4th, 5th, 13th, and the 2nd. Is that correct? No, Senator. Again, I will say it again. I, the, I thought I just... The, benchmark, the benchmark was the 4th, the 5th, and the 13th. And... In the plan that's being submitted to you, it's majority minority districts are the 4th, the 5th, the 13th, and the 2nd. Okay. All right. I thought that's what I said, but... I have a motion. I have a second on the underlying bill of LC 285825S. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to... Um, I'm... Look, I, I, I warned the men... I warned the members of this committee that you could... Where you could spend your time to be judicious in that... And I gave all the time that you wanted with regard to your amendment. I have a motion and I have a second. Mr. Chair, point of I order. Will, point of order. I'm not going to recognize you for a point of order, but Senator Ford, I'll recognize you for one more question. Senator Henson, I will allow you one more question, and then we will take a vote. It's, it's 11.18. You said that we were going to go until 11.30. I so said we had to be done by 11.30 because there's another meeting. I, I we had to be out of this room by 11.30, and I don't know if anybody can get out of this room in one second. I just think it's, you know, it's an undo. Uh, uh, it, I don't think it's necessary <laughs> just to ram things through completely. At least, at least have a veneer of fairness. Senator, if you have a question, you ask a question. But I will take, I will take, um, I will take exception to your comment about railing through. We have. We start at 9 o'clock. I warned the me members of this committee that we had the congressional plan, and there were members of this committee that decided to take an hour and 20 minutes on two local bills. And that left the time that we had from there to 1130. And then I, I allowed the, the um, uh, Senator Henson to, to his amendment, make his, um, his, 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 his comments, and took questions. 
So if you, you have a question, Senator, I will entertain a question. If not, I'll move to somebody else. Let me ask you this. In, in determining the benchmarks, Mr. Chair, did you take into consideration black population or black voting age population? We took the guidelines as given to us by the Department of Justice. Okay. Senator Henson. In, in those Senator Henson, you're recognized for a question. Guidelines. No question, Senator Henson. No question. I'm, uh, in those guidelines. Uh, no, no I, my, my question is this to the right, Chairman Lane or yourself, but since Chairman Lane's here, uh, when the fourth and fifth district were redrawn, both of them increased their minority population. I was kind of wondering if he set a goal at 58 percent, how that those, you know, how the fifth district, you know, grew 8 percent more, why the communities were developed in that way, and uh, if there was any concern that possibly that would be considered back. Um, Senator, I will say that we have to get the population for the districts and try to adhere to the other principles that we, that we uh, have in our, uh, that we adopted earlier. and. Uh, in getting the population that we needed for all of the districts in this, and then for 14 districts, um, that's where we ended up. Okay. I have a motion and I have a second. I'm sorry, you've had, you've, you had your time. All those in favor will vote yes. All those opposed, no. Ask the secretary to call the roll for the purpose of taking the vote. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Cowder. Yes. I mark myself in the affirmative, Mr. Chairman. Senator Balfour. Yes. Senator Chance. Yes. Senator Ford. No. Senator Harpson remains absent. Senator Henson. No. Senator Judson Hill. Yes. Senator Jackson. Yes. Senator Rogers. Yes. Senator Schaefer remains absent. Senator Staten. Yes. Senator Tolleson. Yes. And President Pro Tem. Tim. Yes. Senator Tate. No. Mr. Chairman, I have one, two, three. Ten yes and three no. Having a quorum and having vote ten three, um, the underlying congressional plan rest uh, has passed this committee and now rests in the rules committee. Thank you very much for all of your time and your effort.